anything for that content. Um, looking so back, we started before Madonna. So uh, looking looking back on the video, uh, what do you think of, of of what you see? When I look back at that video, uh -huh. I look at how far we have come. <laughs> Because in a matter of years, too, maybe a year true, later, true. something like that. I, I think for myself, from the time I first saw anything about Vogue, it took me about a whole a year to get the hang of, of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. To feel comfortable enough to know, to think of, you know, know what I was doing. And I remember where they were taking me down to the altos. That was like, I was hot, so much life up in there. <laughs> it's hard to believe that our training ground was a dance floor smaller than this room. living room. <laughs> we were able to kick, split, stretch, model spin, effect. model effect, runway, all of that, and that place would be crowded and no one's drinks got knocked over. That wouldn't come later until we go to bars that had more room. Then people's drinks were getting knocked over because they wouldn't give us any space. They would see us bogey, but they would still walk right into our ass. Sure would. And then try to blame us for knocking their drinks And out. you know what? They would um, introduce themselves, we would make contact, so we made contact with the extravaganzas when they came down from this continental pageant. Um, so much so, they gave us their information and, and uh, surprised, we surprised them by three members of our guard going to uh, their ball, because a, a extravaganza member had left and started uh Lamour. And we surprised them by showing up at their function. Uh, that was in 91 need at that time to have avant-garde have some competition. Me being the eldest child there, I thought it was at that point in time for me to go off and accomplish something on my own. I felt as though the ball scene had not, it, had, it couldn't develop if there was no people here to get out there and, and have a, a competition against. So I had no competition. No competition. None whatsoever. We were always battling each other. Exactly. I think that's why you started the line too, isn't it, Kenny? Oh my God, I had no, we had nobody to battle. The Detroit trips in Ooh. the Vogue Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> against the girls. <laughs> no, not the Vogue Mobile. The Vogue Mobile. Uh -oh. Because it's like Detroit would, would, would realize it, we brought Vogue to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because girls weren't thinking about going to Detroit mm -hmm. until later on. Well, the girls had to start voguing first. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Detroit, we would go there. They would kick. They had kicking teams. They had six o'clock. They had bomb bombs. They had uh, split, scissor kick, all that. We had that too. But we also had a vogue. So, you know, they kind of picked it up from us. They started House of Charles. Mm -hmm. um, and then later on, House of Charles started coming down to our boss. Exactly. We were always battling each other. So, our members decided to go out and start their own houses so we could actually have somebody to battle. So I started, ooh, somebody else might tell you I didn't again, but it was the House of Excel. The, our house debuted at the third ball, and the ball turns, in which we socked it. I feel but like we were the ball today, that's the best We were still being family ball. with avant -garde. And it's, it's good to know, because I never noticed this, is that even though I had my own house, I was still very supportive of avant-garde, <laughs> yeah. behind you. the scenes. I started the House of Edigma in 92, uh, around the same time uh, my house brother Kenny, who's now Ultra Omni, father of Chicago. Um, we started our houses at the same time. He started the House of Elan, I started the House of Enigma. We both branched off from avant-garde. I left on the steady more so than other people have done in the past. Oh! And I returned. You hold that thought, not I, on camera. Until we started branching off and starting our own houses. And I remember something uh, Father Wardell saying, like, well, when you leave the house of our guard, you don't leave the house of our guard to join somebody else's house. You leave our guard and you just start your own house. house. That's right. I wanted to be back with, and it was my first love. Yeah, right. not, not the trash. So I took those kids, and I came back to avant-garde. And then I think Aaron left, and you left, and you started Elon, Aaron started Enigma, and then you went to the East Coast and did what you had to do, and then you came out there. Uh, I had an exit interview to get uh, before I left avant-garde. Chanel had took me down and had an exit interview. 
I started the House of Enigma in 92, and um, that was after leaving the House of Avant-Garde, had been a member for about four years uh, in good standing. I was actually the ball coordinator for the House of Avant-Garde. I helped get our first ball going. Uh, we found a sponsor in Kaboom Nightclub, and it's now no longer open. Uh, they sponsored our first three balls. Kevin Omni came and got real full. Yeah, that was in the first ball that um, we had a Chicago or a New York person come down and visit us. We had heard about our balls, and he knew about a little bit about what we were doing here because I would talk to him on the phone. I interviewed him for my magazine. I forgot who hooked us up with him, but I interviewed him on uh, for one of my issues of the magazine. Uh, he heard about our first ball. He was very supportive. He came down and he went in. He took the word back and he started people like Andre, who was Rodney at the time come to our function. Andre, I thought he was rough line at the time. No. Andre had just started Ms. Rahi in 93, okay. I believe, yes. He was a rev line up until then. Mm -hmm. uh, now, a lot of people in the ballroom community don't really want to give you your, um, the praise that you really deserve because you've done a lot in the ballroom community. Um, are you, are you angry about that or? Um, no, I'm not angry about that. Actually, I'm quite, I'm kind of a shy person. It's like I kind of feel uncomfortable when people are going, you know, go on and on and on about you. Mm -hmm. You know, give me a little recognition and I'm cool. I don't need a whole lot of recognition. 